Notes, I won't be collecting it, it's just notes. So I ask you, with this polynomial, to find the zeros. So what's the first thing that you do? List the factors of? Of 24, of the constant. Okay. Good. So those are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. Did I miss any? Okay. Are we supposed to divide those by something? Are we supposed to write them over or something? Factors of some other All over 1. All over 1. Why 1? The factors of the leading coefficient. Leading coefficient is 1, so it would be kind of redundant to write them over 1, right? So uh, we are good so far. Um, and what do we do now? We do synthetic division slash substitution, right? It's a nice two and one deal. So put the one, seven. I'm just kind of rushing through things that I see just about everybody is on board with. We're all good here. Okay. Um, and what do we put out here? One of these negative two. possible zeros. Negative, negative two. Negative two. Okay. Now, we'll do negative two. In, uh, that'll, we'll make that our first guess. That's our suggestion from this group here. But here's what I want to ask you real quick. Um, what if I put a, a positive one? Or a positive two? You're shaking your head vehemently. Why? Because all the top numbers you have to multiply by, they're all positive. So you'll just end up with a giant positive number. And then Is that? Making sense to everybody? Yeah. Anybody else make that observation? Yeah. Okay. If we put a positive number there. We're just going to wind up uh, every time we multiply, we're going to get positive, 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 positive. We're just going to add some big positive number to 24 and never get zero. Right? What do we need to be right here? Negative. Got to have a negative 24 to get zero. Can't happen. Because these are all positive, can't happen without a negative. So here, negative 2 is the suggestion. Okay, so we bring down a 1, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, uh, 7 minus 2 is 5, 10, uh, 16, 32, 44 minus 32, 12, negative 24, it works. I'm going to guess right now that most of you didn't guess negative 2 as your first one, uh, probably negative 1, okay. Uh, I like negative 2 because... This guy right here winds up being 12 instead of 24. Okay? And that'll be maybe more obvious why I like that. Um, it just makes for a different problem. Okay? Um, so, this is great. We've done some good work. We found out what have we found out as far as what we're looking for. Okay. We found a zero. Negative two is a zero. Okay? Um, So how do we go about finding another zero? First, let me put some ideas out there that I saw. Okay, they wind up being, well, they don't lead us down a path towards all of the zeros, just some of the zeros. Okay. Uh, so here's an option. We found negative two is a zero. Can we just set this up again with the same numbers? One, seven, twenty-six, forty-four. Like we could just like maybe erase this work and put another number there. Make another guess. Yeah. Okay, you can. Right. And maybe if you you found some more zeros, you know negative one would work. Okay, put negative one there. That'll also give you zero. And there were some groups who tried every one of these numbers, okay, and got negative one and negative two as their zeros. All right. So that will get you some zeros. But think about this. Um, could this possibly? Could a polynomial possibly have two zeros? two numbers that are the same, right? Like one is a zero, and also there's another zero of one. Does that make sense? It's possible, right? I mean that uh, if one is a zero, then x minus one is a factor. And if we have uh, one is a zero again, it means there's just another factor of x minus one. To say it has two zeros of one means it has two factors of x minus one. Definitely possible. Okay, could have those factors. If you do it that way, 
if you just keep guessing and guessing and guessing and guessing, will you find those repeat zeros? No, you won't find the repeat zeros. Also, what if you're supposed to find some imaginary zeros, right? That's possible. Imagine you're gonna find imaginary zeros just by guessing? No. Also, irrational zeros, like the square root of five. Okay. Maybe the square root of five will plug in and work just fine. But if we just keep guessing, it won't work. So if we're not guessing, how well, we're guessing for the first one, okay? And my, the, the thing that I'm saying will ultimately not lead down the, the right path is not to guess a second time, but to guess using these numbers again. You see what I mean? Um, so like you use the new numbers when you guess? Right. Okay. That's what you do. So if you just keep using the same polynomial and, and basically just plugging numbers in to see if you get zero, if you were supposed to get five, repeat zeros, you won't find them. If you're supposed to find imaginary zeros, you can't find them that way. Okay. So what are we to do? Well, um, we just found x plus two, x plus two times what will give us the original? Okay. Um, x plus two. Uh -huh. Plus 5x squared uh -huh. plus 16x uh -huh. plus 4. Uh -huh. Okay, so we've just factored out an x plus 2, and so if we want to keep finding zeros, where could we find the rest of those zeros? zero of negative two, the other zeros will be in here, okay? And as Chan said, we could just use the synthetic idea again. And here's why I like using negative two and getting 12 here, right? If you use negative one, you get 24 and other numbers as well, okay? But here we just get a different problem. So if we imagine that, uh, now I'm just asking you to find the zeros of this polynomial. If we just, just give me a second here. Imagine this is how the problem starts, and I just say find the zeros of this polynomial. What would you do first? Find the factors of 12. Just like when you started this problem, you found the factors of 24. Okay? This is exactly the same question as being asked. Find the zeros of this polynomial. Right? We found one zero already of the first one, and this becomes its very own problem. So we find the, the, the factors of 12, So that's why I like getting the 12, because we find out sometimes when we, when we already get one zero, we uh, get maybe a third degree and we have to listen the factors of that constant. But that constant is smaller, it has fewer factors. Okay, fewer factors than the original did. This doesn't have a factor of uh, eight and of 12 and 24. So it doesn't have a factor of eight, doesn't have a factor of 24. Those aren't possible. So we do it again, just like we would if this was our original problem. Uh, imagining this original problem. One, five, five, 16, and 12. And we make another guess. Could negative two work? Yeah. It already worked once. Does that mean it could work again? Yeah, it definitely could work. It could have two zeros and negative two. It could work twice. Right. So don't count it out, but we won't use it because I think all of us know that that's not going to work. Right. Ready? Found negative two. What's the other one? Negative one. Okay. One. Two zeros. 
Um, we whittle it down to this, this quadratic here, which, how many factors will this quadratic have? How many zeros will this quadratic have? One, one, two. Every quadratic should have two, every third degree should have three, every fourth degree should have four, every count of imaginary numbers and repeat zeros. So, we try and solve this equation. We start out trying to do what? Probably. The AC method? Oh, well, that's what we tried first. Oh, okay. Well, with the AC method, I would say that would be only if you have something other than one out here. If you just have a one, then what we're really trying to do is factor. And so we can try x and x, and uh, multiply to make 12, and add to make 4. 4 times 3, that doesn't add to 4. Uh, 12 times 1, uh, 6 times 2, none of those are working. Quadratic, I'm just going to be a little bit picky here. The quadratic equation? Formula. 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 Okay, so there's any quadratic that has an equal sign is a quadratic equation. There is the quadratic formula. Okay, so just to be a little picky about it. So here's the quadratic formula. Can we can help you fill this in? MB is? Negative 4. Square root of 16 minus uh, 48 over 2. So that becomes negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 32. Okay, let's stop there for just a second. What did the directions ask us to find? Real zeros. So what is our conclusion? This is not a real zero. This is not a real zero. Exactly. We got a square root of a negative number. That's an imaginary number. Right. So what do we do at this point? Toss it. Toss it. We just yeah. stop. It's, it's square root of negative. It's imaginary. We only need the real zeros. So what's the answer to this question? Negative two and negative one. Negative two and negative one. <coughs> but just for practice's sake, the sake of practice, let's just clean up this, uh, this thing as simple as it can be. Okay? So we got the square root of a negative. I know he hasn't square, handled the square root of a negative. I? I squared? Square root. Square root 32. Okay, so what is I? Good the imaginary number, the imaginary number is the square root of negative one. Okay? Well that looks good. Now we don't have square root of negative, it's I, that's great. Uh, can we do anything with the square root of 32? Yes. What's that? Um, the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. 16 for every square, the square root of 16 is 4. So we get 4, 4i, four that's bad, 4i, root 2 over 2. And you can uh, take the 2 out of the negative 4 and the 4. Okay, so we can cancel the 2 here and here and here. Okay, notice not here. Not stuff that's outside the square root you cannot cancel things that are inside the square root. They both have to be either outside the square root or inside the square root. But you can't mix the two. So we get negative 2i two, two and a 1 down here. So negative 2 plus or minus 2i root 2 and divide by 1. That's kind of redundant. Don't need to divide by 1. It's just that. So on the same note, don't go back here and try and do 2 divided into 32. Because this is not 32. This is not the number 32. This is the square root of 32. That's what that number actually is. So if we want to cancel that out, we need to do what we did and uh, simplify it down there. Okay, but look at that, it's imaginary. So we don't accept it. We only accept the negative one and the negative two. X equals negative one, X equals negative two. Next.
next one. Yeah, it's real good, like quality and depth stuff. In the first one, we're gonna gonna surface this one. Just gonna skim across it. There's just like one little thing that's different, and that's all I really wanna highlight here. But let's see how you use one. difference here with this problem when compared to the one we just did before? There's a two leading coefficient of two, right? So we get our normal list of one, two, seven, fourteen, right? That's normal. But we also have what? All that stuff over two, right? So not just those, but also 1 over 2, 2 over 2, uh, 7 over 2, and 14 over 2. Okay, but Trevor, something you want to say about my list here? Um, some of them cancel out because they're because like 14 over 2 is 7. That's just 7 again, and 2 over 2 is 1 again, right? That's good, good stuff. Um, Um, so that's the main difference. What we do from there is pretty much the same as we've ever done, right? Anybody find a zero that works? Um, seven. Oh, two. You're gonna give me that one first. Yeah. How about two? Yeah. Negative. Okay. How about just two? Let's keep it simple. Who guessed seven halves to start with? Is it seven? It's negative. 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 negative seven. Uh, okay. Uh, two, five, a negative eleven, and a negative fourteen. Uh, two, four, nine, eighteen, seven, and fourteen. Okay, so we get two x squared plus nine x plus seven. If we put negative seven halves, I just want to show everybody to know it didn't work, of course. But it could be a little easier. Yes? Um, Jade. Jade. Is right there. Okay, and what do we do with this guy here? Okay, so synthetic divided again. Make another guess. Okay, we'll do that. I'm just gonna say we're running a risk here. Okay, because when you get to the quadratic, what kind of zeros could we wind up with? Rational zeros, certainly. Kind of zeros could be quadratic of us. Yeah. The irrational ones, this one doesn't test for rationals. And imaginary numbers. So, uh, so this is kind of, we're hoping that something else will work. Two, nine, seven. Uh, what's our list look like? Yeah, plus or minus? No, one. One. one seven. And seven, one and seven from seven prime. And seven, we're about uh, one, one over two. Right? One over two? Okay. Um, so what do we try? Uh, negative one. Negative one, uh, two, negative two, seven, negative seven, zero. So we get two x plus seven. Okay, so we just found uh, zeros of two, negative one, and how do we find the zeros from this factor? Yeah? So it equals zero. Equals zero. That's the whole idea, right? That it comes out to be zero. Subtract seven, divide by two, negative seven halves. Well, what else could we have done? We could have factored it, right? Use the AC method. We could have uh, just guessed and check factored, right? Just keep plugging numbers into the factors until it works out. 
Um, either way, everybody got a factor of 2x plus 7 if we worked it all the way through, right, and solved it for x. Or quadratic formula, which would be kind of a long process for, you know, a factor would have been a little bit faster. Okay. Um, here we go. Are there any other questions from the homework? So, like, what's like the name 7 over 2? Mm -hmm. So, when you bring down the 2, you just times that 2 by the bottom 2 over it, and then you take the top, correct? Yeah, yeah. Two times seven. Yeah. 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 Degree of one. Can we go even degree of two? Yeah. And it's quadratic. We can factor it. This quadratic is a pretty easy to factor. Uh, if we can't factor it, if we can't factor it. A quadratic. Where do we turn? Quadratic formula right over here. Okay. That'll find us our irrational zeros, our imaginary zeros. Okay. And that's a one part of like what this section does. It expands our horizons into having the imaginary zeros, which we already did. We did it in the first problem. We found the imaginary zeros, we just rejected them because they were imaginary, not real. All right. So, uh, any other questions? Just put your homework in the middle of your tables. And I'll come around to get them. Chop, chop, people, let's go. Just do it, huh? That's just I'm getting inspired to say that to people in regards to turning in the homework. 80s, 80s shirts. Well, I heard it and I like looked down. Maybe that was like uh, oh, 90. You would not be alive. Oh, dude, I'll be wasting a lot of time watching that. You found out you were as old as me and start crying. So much of your life had gone by. 33 years old. <laughs> Come on, people, yeah. what are we doing over here? We're here. We're 29 at the oldest, dude. Huh? 29 at the oldest. Lines? You're 18 and you're just like... I put it on the computer and there's so much... Do I have another one for this group? This is that four. Grab your skill card. Come on. Did I get all yours? Yeah. Three and then this? Yeah. So you need you were gone for Okay, so um, you can see up on the board what I'm proposing here is that those are three zeros to some polynomial. Okay, what I want you to do is figure out what that polynomial was. Like we can find, we can take a zero and or, find, or take a polynomial and find the zeros. Okay, think about just reversing that process. All right, think together. Work together and think. We've got these two other people with you. We've got one. Oh. A square. And a half. You're happy to Work backwards. Think. What's the step just before I found out these are the zeros? What was the step before that? 
Yes, our, our concept is going to be 10 years, and it's going to be five, to whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Next to the cube. <laughs> well, we'll get a negative. So. Um, and then we'll, then we'll bring this guy in. Oh, and then we'll bring this guy in. I just started learning that way, and now we should have to find out and figure out what that's all about. I don't know what to do next.
You do four yeah, so the first yeah. one. Yeah. And then you do the exact same one. But that, for this one, when you have a three, you can check the time of this time. Like right there. Yeah. 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 Got it. Second half. Yeah. 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 So it's pretty much like you are expected to the yeah, but you can't really do four since so there's three. Yeah, yeah. for the first one. Okay. Either this came right to your mind, or just a little bit of prompting. thing. Everybody came up with this idea, right? The, the zero, negative five would have come from x plus five, because what we do, we would take x plus five, set it equal to zero, solve for x, x is negative five, same for this, same for this. And we multiply together, okay? Do I need to show you how to multiply these together? I don't think so. Okay, you guys are. Even the group that thought they got it wrong got it wrong. So I think that's pretty good. Um, okay. One, uh, at least one of my things. So same idea. I gave you some zeros. Okay. Let's say I gave you the zero of three uh, and of two plus four i. Two plus four i possible? Do we ever get zeros of two plus four i? Well, theoretically, it's not a real zero. No, it's not real. We're see in 5.7, we're expanding our horizons to not real zeros. Okay, so it is possible. It's within the realm of possibility. Right? All right. Does that ever happen? Yeah. How does that happen? How, like through the process of solving out, finding the zeros of these polynomials, how do we come about a two plus four i? Square root of negative 16. How do you come by the square root of negative 16? Yeah, quadratic formula, right? We're doing the quadratic formula. Uh, now, think about that. We let's imagine we use a quadratic formula and we came up with a zero of two plus four i. Everybody cool with that? It looks like some people are cool with that. Who's not cool with that? <laughs> okay. Um, I'll get somebody to answer this question and then we'll answer that question. Okay. Uh, so we use the quadratic formula. We've got two plus four i. What other zeros should we have gotten? Minus 4i. Okay, so we use a quadratic formula uh, and we came out with uh, 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 16. Right? Does that look like something that could come out of the quadratic yeah. formula? So then, a little over some point. But 2 plus or minus the, the i times the square root of 16, 2 plus or minus 4i. So if we get one imaginary zero, there should be another one, just with the opposite sign. Does that make sense? Okay. Not only imaginary zeros, but irrational zeros. If we get two plus the square root of three, we should have two minus the square root of three. And you can think of it as, I must use the quadratic formula, or whoever found these zeros, use the quadratic formula to find them. And there's always that plus or minus in the quadratic formula. Okay. So. That's just called the either complex conjugate theorem or the irrational conjugate theorem. What's a conjugate? These are conjugates. They're conjugates because we changed the, the sign in the middle. That's all conjugates are. Okay. So if this is a zero, its conjugate is a zero when we change the sign. Okay. You can think of it as it's all coming out of the quadratic formula. Okay. All right. What factor does this come from? Okay, now let's figure out what zeros these, or what factors these came from. Maybe a little bit trickier to think of. Okay, here's, here's the half. Okay, I'm just going to reveal it. All right. It's x minus 2 plus 4i. Right. And 
then this one would be x minus uh, 2 minus 1i. Whatever the 0 is, you could always just say x minus that 0. That works even if they're negative. For instance, negative 5. If we put x minus and then negative 5, what would that be? Minus negative 5. X plus 1. Um, so now let's just go along and deal with it. Okay? X minus 3, let's distribute this negative here. X minus 2 minus 4i. X minus 2 plus 4i. Just distributing this negative of those things. <coughs> okay. First, I'm going to suggest that we multiply these crazy looking factors together. Um, multiply them as if as if this is one big group of a thing. Okay. So if you'll notice, these two things, this factor and this factor, are conjugates. They're also conjugates because the first thing's the same, x minus two and x minus two. The second thing's the same, four i, four i. It's just the sign is different. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and distribute it to here as a whole group, and then to here. So I'll get x minus 2 times itself, x minus 2 squared. Okay. Uh, x minus 2 times 4i. I'm doing this because there's going to be a nice cancellation. Okay. And then we can notice a pattern producible out of this. So x minus 2 times 4i, that's 4i times x minus 2. All right, we distributed that x minus 2. Now we'll distribute the negative 4i. Negative 4i distributed to x minus 2. That's negative 4i times x minus 2. Do you see that cancellation happening? 4i times x minus 2 minus 4i times x minus 2. That's one thing minus exactly the same thing. That's 0. Okay. That'll happen every time. Negative 4i times 4i. What's negative 4i times 4i? Negative 16 i squared. Great. Who said that? But i squared is that? What is i squared? Well, it's close. It's what? It's negative 1. Okay. i squared is negative 1. It's the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Remember that? i squared is negative 1. So this is plus 16. x minus 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 16. That cleaned up pretty nice. Right? Those, those two middle terms canceled out uh, because of the, the, that they're conjugates. Okay, conjugates, when you multiply them together, this middle term will cancel out. If you remember, like the difference of squares, when you factor the difference of squares, you get conjugates. And when you multiply those conjugates together, you get that middle term canceling out. Okay. All you have to do is just keep multiplying this out. So we got x minus three. X minus two squared is x minus two times x minus two. That's x minus four x squared minus four x plus four. Leave your desks. That's fine. I'm just gonna finish this out.